buttons and cursors. Let's go ahead and go ahead and try to start this game up. And if we click the menu button here, we get our menu, and we have a little button that's animated. You can also see we can see our cursor in the game mode uh, because of the script we uh, see down on the right hand corner bottom right hand corner of the screen and I can click exit to exit out of the game. Today we're going to change and get rid of this uh, default little cursor and actually use some art uh, and so I have a custom image. Um, so let's see, uh, I think that the camera, yes, is what I linked the mouse script to. So what I'm going to do now is, um, well, we'll leave that for now just in case I mess up and I don't can't see the cursor. Uh, we are going to hit spacebar and type in plane to import an image as plane. This is something that's built into Blender now, but it has to be enabled under user preferences. We went over that in an earlier tutorial. Uh, we are also going to now just choose our image. Right here we have cursor button that, uh, PNG, and we're going to say enable all three of these. Import. Also, before I go any further, I am going to enable screencast. Oh, it is enabled. I uh, guess I just didn't turn it on over here. Screencast. Start. That's where I need. There we go. So now you can see what buttons I'm pressing in the bottom left of the screen here. So we just imported a cursor, or yeah, a cursor. We imported a plane with an image on it. That's the image right there. And it's lying flat facing straight up. We're going to hit RX 90 to rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis. And then we'll also hit uh, grab Y and we will move it forward some wrap it up on the y so there's our our cursor scale it down a little bit obviously at this point though it just kind of sits there it doesn't really move around um, exit there let's go in the side view and see where that cursor is there it is right there we do want to make sure it's in front of our menu so let's just move it real close to our camera here go back to our camera view and scale it down some more so there it is. Perfect. Okay. So now we need to link uh, a script to that. But before we do that, no, we'll do that first so you can see why one of the reasons we're doing what we're going to do after that. So with that cursor selected, that plane selected, we are going to um, create a new script over here. We're going to click here and we're going to say, oh, there's a plus button right there. Create text block. And now we need to type in some code. So this is the second set of code we're typing in. Both times was just for the cursor. We're, it's, it's a Python code. And we're going to, first thing we're going to do is import a module. And that module is going to be the game logic module that comes with Blender. So game logic. And we're going to import it as BGL. So basically we're creating an object based on this module called BGL. And then... Let me type out some code here and then I will explain what I can of it. Current controller. Owner equals cond owner. And mouse equals sensors in here we're going to say movement owner dot position equals mouse dot ray source okay so what we've done here is we imported game logic as an object here, and then we're creating an object called cont, uh, which is um, connecting to that object, get current controller, so basically the controller uh, object. Uh, then the owner, so this is the owner is going to be our um, image, our plane. So when you say owner in the script and you link an object to it, that owner is the object, so in this case our plane, our cursor, our image. Next we're going to say create another object called mouse and mouse is equal to um, the movement. We're going to create a sensor here, so the controller sensor and um, 
we are so with that plane selected we're going to add a sensor here we're going to make sure that it's a mouse sensor mouse um, over any and we're going to enable pulse mode by clicking on this little three lines here and we have to make sure that this is named properly now it doesn't matter what it's named as long as it matches what you put in the script so we're calling it movement which is right there uh, so we're saying the mouse equals whatever the controller sensor so if the sensor equals m movement so anytime this is true well then we're going to continue with this and we're going to say owner position so the position of our plane with the image on it is going to match where the mouse cursor is so now we can click here and we can say Python connect this to this and we're going to add also an always sensor make sure we enable pulse mode on that as well and connect that so both those things are true and let's give this a name we'll call this image cursor click here and we'll go image cursor so we have mouse cursor image cursor so you can enable and disable this depending on uh, the developer of the level because hopefully someday you will all be developers and create levels for this fantastic game anyway now I can go into game mode I can press P and nothing happens why I'm not sure I forget what I've done wrong I must have forgot to do something I'm not sure if this needs to be labeled .py. Let's label it .py just to be sure. Okay, so that's not the issue. We have pulse mode, movement. Probably more likely than anything, I typed something wrong. So let's go over this. Import game logic. Okay. Get current controller. Okay. Ah. Make sure you type things properly. We'll press P up, oh, and now we can see our cursor. But it's huge. Why is it huge? Because we're in camera mode. You'll see if I. Oh, this is a problem. I can't. Okay, I got out of the game. <laughs> I couldn't click on the buttons to exit. Okay, oh, I think we set Q to exit, didn't we? Let's see something. Yeah, Q can exit, so that's not an issue. Um, first things first, we no longer need our regular cursor at this point, so we can just choose our camera where we connected this and delete both of those. So now we just have that cursor and Q to escape. So um, why is it getting all big? Because we're in a perspective mode. With the camera selected, if we go up here to our camera tab, you can see we're in perspective mode. If you remember in the earlier tutorials, I wasn't using the camera because we're working with a 2D game and I didn't want depth. And then eventually I had to start using the camera because I wanted to link stuff to the camera. Well, uh, while looking up stuff on doing this cursor, I realized that there's an orthographic mode. And if we click that, it brings the camera out of that depth mode, which is perfect since we're working with a 3D, or I'm sorry, a 2D game. So now that we've done that, we can choose the camera here, grab it, center click, and okay. Let's go quad view so we can see what's going on. Grab Y. I guess, uh, yeah, this is something I probably should have done in the beginning. I didn't realize this was going to cause an issue. But you'll notice that if I do start the game, our cursor is working. Our menu is huge now. So uh, I think oh, this is a this is a little bit of an issue because I was not expecting this. Hmm. What if I scale the camera? Nope. Well, I hope I don't have to shrink everything because that'll throw my physics all off. See, We're gonna run into problems every now and again. Let's turn off perspective mode. Oh, what's this scale? There we go. That will fix it. Zoom in here. Glad I saw that. Okay. See, we're all learning together. And we'll just move this up. Oh, we set keep 
frames for that, didn't we? So let's um, change this back to timeline. And uh, we're on the first frame, which is our first keyframe for this. I'm going to grab this on the z-axis, move it up, and hit I to reset that keyframe. We're also going to have to take uh, this button here. We'll grab it, put it here, scale it up, grab it down. There's no animation of that, so be okay. The button on there is linked to that, so that's okay. So now our cursor is very small, but it works. Oh, look at that, the, the, the change sizes. Okay. I did the change size, but I'm mumbling to myself. I do that sometimes when I'm thinking. Okay, so we're getting there. What we need to do now, though, is still make sure. Okay, that's there. That's good. Go back to camera view. Scale it up. So there's our cursor. We can click our menu button here. We can click exit here. And uh, go to the second keyframe and scale this up some. And reset that keyframe. Uh, there we go. Let's start the game. Well, that's actually even better. Now it kind of zooms in because we changed the size of the menu. Even better. Exit. So there we go. We have our cursor. We can actually probably move it off to the side while we're not playing so it's not in our way when we're editing stuff. And uh, But when the game mode starts, it's going to link to where your cursor is. Menu. Exit. So what do we learn today? We learn a new little script to use a plane as an image so we can use a nice little, rather than this default little uh, cursor here. Did I say plane as an image? Plane as a cursor. Um, also, we learn about using the camera in orthographic mode, which if you'll notice, if you look at our cubes now, there's no depth to them really uh, when, they're, when they're straight onto the camera. Um, only when they're at an angle do you see any depth because we're in a non-perspective mode, which is great since we're working in a 2D game, uh, which is really what we want. Not a huge difference in that aspect, but it does get the cursor working. And there we go. So I thank you for watching this tutorial. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Uh, should be a link in the description. Also, our pop project, uh, the game that we're working on currently, um, is filmsbychris.com forward slash lowercase p-o-p. I'll link to that in the description. You can get all these files, videos, other updates, and at some point, hopefully get involved. Um, so... We're moving quite along. I'm very happy with the way things are coming. I hope you are too. And I hope that you have a great day.